We talked about this uh, about finances. We, talk about, we talked about how you can break through. How God can give you the mind of Joseph to prepare for the opportunity to invest well to, to search the market to see what's ahead to be to be to be, to be aware of the environment and follow the trends of the, of the market the highest commodities to find ways you can meet people's needs so that you can be successful in whatever you attempt God gives those business ideas so much is at stake so much is at stake the Bible says that gold of money answers for all things he God gives his spirit saves you by his blood gives you the opportunity to know him all you need to do is to ask him to give you the grace to have resources to be able to do things you are not able to do without money and a lot of the things we do in the kingdom of God requires money requires money preaching requires money this microphone is wired on speakers and the speakers are wired into the radio station and television station and we throw the pictures across the globe and that requires money as I speak now we are on a generator not on power but on generators we have been going for, for, for a long time now because the electricity in our area has been, has been having some difficulties so we have to have three phases for us to operate the phases of umeme now we have only two and sometimes one or two so we abandon electricity now we are running on generators and that's money fuel the generator itself the, the servicing of the generator you know, you know a lot of things we do for God that are purely spiritual requires hard cash no wonder many pastors are anointed but only in one area they are anointed to preach and pray and, and then you wonder why they are not able to do A, B and C because we need two, two different graces two graces okay, one is the anointing and the grace of God salvation which is free blessings of, of, of knowing him and the grace to be called by God that's salvation but on the other side we need tangible things to be taken care of and that requires money money answers for all things the Bible says and by the way it is true answers all things as far as this physical realm is concerned it can't buy salvation but it can propel salvation it can create an environment where people can get saved so we can say to get people saved you need money you need to do that crusade you need to be on this radio and on this television so that the voice can be heard and the word can be raised people can be laid in Jesus name so as a firm believer if you win in spiritual areas you should start contending for financial areas contend for your victory financially contend you know, aggressively in Jesus name because God wants to give you this territory why only salvation territory why only heaven territory the blood of Jesus the spirit of the living God all those are wonderful things and we need them beyond any other effort or any other achievement you could ever want to have in life this is that's important ok but the thing is this with, without resources Jesus couldn't even preach he, he, had, he had to ask uh, you know Peter to uh, lend him his boat 
The Bible says he had people that ministered to seven hours which requires resources in finances. Often time it would tell people to go and prepare. Prepare a house. Prepare a room. Prepare a, a, a meal. And so, so they will be able to do that. They were able to do that. And the Bible says he had money. In his, Jesus had money in his entourage. In, in, the, in his team. And Judas Iscariot was the treasurer. How could you have a treasurer if you have no money? And the Bible says Judas Iscariot used to steal uh, some of the money that was, was uh, being a steward of. Nazibba. Nazibba. And, and, and it continued like that. And Jesus never even said, yes, we, hey, are we are bankrupt here. And now we are stealing money. You must be having a lot for somebody to steal from you on a daily basis. And you don't even care. Or if you care, but you just silence, just, just keep on, uh, you know, just look the other way. But, but the thing is this you know somebody is stealing from you. But you know you have enough. Yes, he's providing. So he's going to face his own music and uh, face his own guilt. But for me, I'm going to continue to preach. Oh, yeah, you know, Musango, we go na Yana, 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 you know, Yari. So what's happening here? He had resources. He had resources. Ministry without money. Anointing without money. It leads to crippledness. Ministry crippledness. You want to build a building. But you cannot. You want to buy 10 iron sheets. But you cannot. You want to go and preach the gospel. And touch the church somewhere. But you cannot. Because all other areas spiritually are, have been taken care of except finances. You can even tell people to pray and they pray and fast and they feel the anointing and they give the prophecies. God showed me last night that in this area where we are going in the crusade it's going to be a great breakthrough. And the devil say, ah, okay, I'll wait for you. I know where to touch. And you, you, you find he, he can even delay the crusade. So that uh, you have the posters, but you have no money for, for hiring the truck to take the equipment. And then you end up postponing the crusade. And the posters are now rendered powerless or useless. And the devil says, I'm getting something out of this. And then you go over there, and the electricity is not there. The generator you took was so cheap, all beat down, broken. And he has to stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. You become an embarrassment to everyone because there's no money. Oh, he runs out of fuel. I know, I know a preacher who, 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 who was compelled to take an offering so early in the crusade from none born again. None born again. He had to ask people, let us give an offering very quickly because the generator had run out of, my, of, of fuel and there was no money. So he said, my brothers, i never done this before asking sinners to give to God. But you have an opportunity now. Oh, this is an opportunity now. How many of you are sinners? <laughs> but you love God and you can give. He took an offering from sinners to, to help the work. So, so you know how th those are desperate measures. And that's how we used to be. We could have bad meetings. Bad poor crusades. This actually dishonoring to our God. And when people looked at us, they said, I don't want to join you guys to start struggling just like you are struggling. So what happens here? Even when you are spiritual, uh, spiritually fit, you need, you need financial anointing. 
If that is needed on our side, side, how about you? Running your house, paying your bills, building that building, taking care of that business, traveling those nations. You need resources. You need money. You need God to help you. So I pray that every Ugandan will have a good paying job. And if they don't, if they don't hire you, you start your own job, uh, you know, company. Or business, or business and you. excite your own faith and by the grace of God he will make you prosperous in Jesus mighty name so I want us to pray today along those lines I want us to de declare that the goodness of God is upon our lives and the mercies of our father is upon our lives and that we can win in life in every circumstance by the spirit of God financially in Jesus mighty name Proverbs 13 verse number 4 says The soul of the sluggish craves and gets nothing While the soul of the diligent is richly supplied Did you hear that? If you are a diligent man And you Love God, you are going to richly be supplied. Your soul, no, no, your soul. Now, but he's talking about the sluggard because he's talking about working. Proverbs chapter number two, verse number twenty-one. For the upright will inhabit the earth. And those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land. And the treacherous will be rooted out of it. My son, do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will do add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. That is Proverbs chapter number 2 from verse number 21 all the way to chapter number 3 verse number 24. What does that mean? God is telling you you can win if you take God at his word and be at peace with God and don't let anything that corrupts you come in. Come in. But if you take the word of God do not forsake it. Take it and bind it around your neck. You are going to be successful. He's talking about you. He's talking about you. I'm, talk, I'm talking about people rising up from poverty to, a right, uh, to, to prosperity. Psalms 37 verse number 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart. What desires do you have? What desires do you have? God is able to supply your needs. In Jesus' mighty name. Write these verses down. Ezra chapter number 7. Verse number 17 to 28. It's a lot to read. But let's quickly see what happens here. Ezra chapter number 7. 17 to 28. With this money then, you shall with all diligence buy bulls, rams, and lambs. With the, their grain offering and their drink offerings and you shall offer them on to the altar of the house of your God that is in Jerusalem it takes money to sacrifice to the Lord it takes money to sacrifice to the Lord with this money you shall buy bulls and sacrifice to the Lord do you see that? do you see that? you need it I need it. We need it. And God must be glorified from the sacrifice that we get 
from our money. You take money, money to sacrifice, sacrifice to worship, and God is honored. What honored God there? What honored God there? Your money, which was transferred into a sacrifice, and the sacrifice went to the Lord in worship. So if you have no money, you have no sacrifice. That's what he was meaning. No, no money, no bulls, no money, no lambs, no money, no worship, no money, no altar, no money, no worship. And that's what he was talking about here. And David says, I am not going to offer to the Lord something that has not costed me money. I want to be able to pay for the bulls that I'm going to sacrifice to the Lord. He denied somebody making an offer to him. He, he said, take these bulls, take these lambs, and offer to the Lord. And David said, no, 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 no. I want to buy them. I want to buy them with my money. I want to worship God with a cost. I want to be able to lose money for God's work and for, God, for, my, for me to worship the Lord. So he, he says that. He says, with this money then, you shall with all diligence by bulls rams and lambs with their grain offerings and their drink offerings and you shall offer them to the altar of the house of your God that is in Jerusalem whatever seems good to you and your brothers to do with the rest of the silver and gold you may do according to the will of your God, the vessels that have been given you for the service of the house of your God, you shall deliver before the God of Jerusalem. And whatever else is required for the house of your God, which it falls to you to, to provide, you may provide it out of the king's treasury. And I, Akasuerus, the king, Ataxesus, the king, make, make a decree to all the treasuries in the province beyond the river. Whatever Ezra, the priest, the scribe of the law of the, of the God of heaven requires of you, let it be done with all diligence. Did you hear that? This is the president. He's telling every governor of every of the bank, I mean, the governor of the central bank, and he's also decreeing that everyone that has money for the, that belongs to the government, anyway, in any district of Uganda, should be able to find this man of God and whatever requisition he brings to the table. They should be able to do it not slowly, not sluggishly, but with all diligence to meet every need. May God pay your bills. May God pay your bills. May kings bring their blessings to you. Pastors, may God find a way of providing for your vision in Jesus' name. May God lift you up from poverty. May He provide for the vision is given to you by the grace of God. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, God is amazing. He wants to give you success. Look at this. Second Chronicles 31, 20 to 21. That is Second Chronicles 31, 20 to 21. Thus Hezekiah did, did throughout all Judah. Judah. Now read it again. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah. And he did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. And every work that he undertook in the service of the house of God and in accordance to 
the law and the commandments seeking his God he did with all his heart I like what I'm going to say and prospered and he prospered and you cannot honor God love God and go wrong you prosper you will prosper and remember this even the blood of Jesus takes uh-uh, gives us an added advantage that even when we fail or we falter or we stumble the blood of Jesus makes a difference so you can say we are perfect though we are imperfect but we are perfect on the account of Jesus Christ so we can do well with all our hearts and we can prosper I pray that whatever you shall do whether it's God's work or your own work but remember this your own work is never your own work now because now you are the vessel even if you're not a preacher here and you're in business your business is God's work you are can extend God's influence and God's vision among the people that you work for and before you know your work is never work your work is both worship and a platform of evangelism and you don't even have to be preaching you don't have to be preaching just live loudly for God stand for goodness love forgiveness through the character and people will, will one day want to find out about who you believe in and who is your God